Hey, I hope everyone's doing well. Today I'm going to do my first ever where I take pretty much any LiPo4 12 volt in general cells that I can get my hands on and I'm going to put them through a battery of tests to really determine their usefulness and in what application. So I'm going to be doing 5 second, 15 second, and 30 second bursts. I'm also going to be doing capacity testing. I'm going to do a charge curve for them. And then I'm going to charge them all the way up and let them sit open circuit for a while and see where they rest open circuit after a full charge. So right now I just have um, Headwing. They are the, what, 38150s? Uh, no, 38120s. And I just have these four right now top balancing to 3.65 volts. And then we will begin the test. We'll start with the burst testing. Uh, but before we do that, I'm actually going to warm the cells up by probably three times just doing large pulls and then charging them back up in rapid succession because once the cells are warmed up, they do perform better and I want to make sure that we're really seeing the, the maximum potential of all the cells that we test. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have them set up here. Uh, I have the monitor set up. You can see 13.38 uh, volts. And I'm um, doing a temperature check. It looks like the cells are about 82 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick couple of tests or a quick couple of warm up pulls, charge them back up, and then we will do the real burst test. Okay, I'm going to start with a 30 second burst, see what, it, what these cells can do <clears throat> for 30 seconds sustained and not fall under 12 volts, that's the criteria here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it where I, I think it has a chance um, to do this and Go ahead, we're going to start when this timer is at, well, actually, I'm going to reset the data and get this all set up to log. And have it at a set of 8 amp hours. I'm going to record the screen on my phone so I can actually share it there. It'll be a better view of it. Okay, I'm starting to test at 20. So it cannot do 60. 60 is too much around 30 seconds for the headways. Okay, so we are picking up 103.1 on the cells after that test. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try again with different power.
Okay, so uh, for a 30 second burst, they could not do 60 amps, but they did successfully achieve 50 amps for 30 seconds. Hundred and five point six degrees on the cells. Okay. Next we're gonna up the power and see what we can hold for fifteen seconds. For 15 seconds, we did get 60 amps. Uh, it was really close there. But we did get 60 amps. So now we're gonna see what we can do uh, for five seconds. Okay, um, five second burst test starting now. Nope, can't do over 100. Right away, rolled that up. Okay, gonna try for 80 for five seconds. <clears throat> it cannot do uh, 80 either. So that is actually the smallest amount that I can test um, before 60. So we're gonna have to call the five second burst. We know it can do 60 amps, but anything over that, and it seems to just tank very quickly. So next we will do the, the discharge curve and the capacity test. We'll do these together. Um, it'll be fairly easy to map out like that. Okay, so now it's time to do the, the capacity test. I have an active balancer hooked up just to make sure that the cells, you know, one doesn't drain a lot faster than the others. Uh, I do have the set going down to, it'll be going down, well, we're gonna do one C. So an eight amp pull down to eight volts, about two volts per cell. And I'm also gonna monitor it just to make sure through the Bluetooth balancer that we don't drop a cell too low. Um, so right here, you can see I set this to 10 amps. That way we can see when it stops, how far, or how much amperage we've used out of this 10 amps. So I'm expecting around their eight per cell. So let's go ahead and get started.
Okay, so the test is done. Um, you can see we have 4.633 amp hours remaining. So if we take the 10 that we originally started with, we have 4.633 remaining. So that means we tested at 5.367 amp hours. Um, one of these cells did start to drop a little bit before the other ones did, and that's one of the risks you take with used cells is they're probably not going to be all um, on the on level with each other. So we, yeah, so there we go. We have 5.367 amp hours, and I do have the discharge curve that I will be able to show you shortly. And um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the charge curve. Get that going and we're going to charge them at 24 amp hours and we will graph out the charge curve that way we'll have the charge and discharge then we'll leave them sit for a bit and see what their open circuit voltage is at the end and that'll be the final test so we'll go ahead and get started on the charge cycle Okay, so now I'm going to let this sit for about an hour and we will check on the status of it when we return. See what the open circuit voltage rests at and get it graphed out. Okay, so first we have the results of our 30 second burst test. Um, we did get 50 amps sustained, so I would feel comfortable calling these uh, 50 amp output cell at 4S. Uh, 1p. Um, next up we have the, the discharge curve and you can kind of see the voltage throughout the discharge curve as well as the total of 5.36 amp hours. Um, this is substantially less than the rated and I don't know if all of the cells were that low but you know we had a, a total culmination of 8 volts when the test cut off so you know that's when we caught it and that is one of the risks of buying used cells. Um, Next, we have the charge curve, and it's a fairly standard charge curve. We did charge these back up at 3C, which is one of the nice things about headways is their accelerated charging rate. And then we have our final results pulled up here, and that is uh, max burst for 30 seconds. We got 50 amps. For 15 seconds and 5 seconds both, we are at a 60 amp pulse. Uh, we measured the internal resistance of one of the cells at 2.6 milliohms. And again, the capacity was 5.36 amp hours. So... I would recommend these for, you know, if you have like a 64 amp hour bank, you would likely be good with anywhere between four and 6,000 watts, depending on your, you know, your alternator and how many amps you had outside of your battery banks. Um, yep, so if you have any questions, just let me know, comments, questions, concerns. I'll definitely be doing more of these in the future just to check out all of the available cells and figure out what's really the best and what you can expect from these. All right. Thanks, everyone.